Welcome back to Great Lakes Junction, everyone. We're going to get started on a large project. We're going to take this old computer monitor and some different electronic stuff we have here that I don't know anything about. This is where my son's going to come into the project because he has a bunch of cables, knobs, buttons, circuit boards, switches, lights. And I have the wood. This is my part of it. And all of this is supposed to become an arcade machine. So we're going to see how this project works out for us. Follow us along. Okay, so we've been f assembling the frame for this. So what we have started, this is the very base of the frame. We're going to put records in the bottom of this for storage. So there'll be a shelf there in the very bottom. There'll be another shelf on that second row. This will be the height here of where our control panel is going to be. So when you're standing at it, this is 36 inches high. I think that makes it a comfortable height where the controls will be. And the back legs extend all the way to the top. We have a lot more work to do on the frame yet to make it nice and sturdy. And for the side, just to give you an idea of what our profile, we, we taped a piece of paper over this wood so we could pencil out our shape so we still have to cut this out yet but that's how we intend that the sides will look so that's as far as we've gotten today it's taken us a lot longer than we expected just to get the layouts exactly where we wanted them so we'll continue on coming along on the frame so we've got the shelves are in the bottom now uh, we've got our angle set with our beams in there for what the control panel is going to be on a slight angle and we have the uprights now in for the angle that the monitor is going to be on. So you can see the side panel. We just have it clamped to the frame with our paper pattern facing us. So we've been following that pattern as we build the frame up. So we're continuing along, but it's starting to take shape. So we had some scrap plywood that we just used to kind of mock up where the controls are going to be. I needed to get some angles and stuff written down before I started cutting up our good wood for this. So I think we've got figured out what we want. Uh, we're going to make this, that is all one piece. So the whole thing slides forward and we'll be able to tip that up and get at the wiring and stuff underneath when we're finished. So that's the idea of it. Um, now I did switch my saw blade over. I'm going to start cutting the MDF board and I don't want it chipping out. So I had a 40 tooth blade in there up until now. The finest blade I have right now is a 60 tooth. So we've changed it to the 60 and we'll see how it cuts this MDF board. cuts it pretty good. It doesn't do a lot of chipping. There's just some very fine chipping on the edge. So I think that's better than what the 40 tooth would have been and it's a new blade so it's good and sharp also.
we've got this is where our control panel height is going to be at we drilled the center hole where the joystick's going to be and now we're going to drill the four holes for our buttons your up down fire buttons whatever you need so it took us a while to measure out our layout of exactly where we wanted them and I got to put three more buttons up here. I think these are single player, two player, start button, something like that. So I got to lay that out a little bit better yet so I can drill those also. Uh, but we had to remember the thickness of our frame that we didn't want to get our buttons too far to the edge, but we wanted them a comfortable distance from the joystick. We didn't want you to have to be too close together. So I think we've got everything laid out. It requires a one and an eighth inch hole for those buttons that have to go in here. all figured out for our controls I got everything drilled uh, we've just got a few pieces of wood now that things are clamped we're waiting for some glue to set up so there's not much more we can do today uh, we'll let the glue set going to take the legs off and build a face plate around here and then figure out how to mount that to the face plate but it has enough of a tilting uh, variation on it that we can leave the legs on so we put a shelf in leave the legs on we will have to cut them off just a little bit because they stick out beyond the shelf but that's going to support the weight very nicely without trying to fabricate something on a face plate to hold that monitor so we're getting closer, we've been working our way from the bottom up, making everything fit as we go. So we're almost to the point where we're going to have to start cutting this shape out of the side panels, because this cutoff material that's going to be left, I'm going to need some of that for making this face plate that we want to do around here. So we took the monitor off of these legs, we had the legs marked where we need to cut the tips off. metal inside of these legs so we have a hacksaw blade and that jigsaw to cut through it. We still need to figure out exactly what we're doing up at the top here. Behind this area at the very top there's no beam across it and the back material we're going to put on is quite thin so I'm afraid if you tip it back and someone you know tries to grab a hold of it to carry it there's no structural strength behind this top corner. So we may put a beam across there yet and we got to figure out what we're going to do to enclose this. We want this front panel, it's either going to have lettering in it or pictures in it or something lighted from behind to make it stand out more as an arcade machine. And we also want to mount a couple of speakers in this area also. So okay, I think we've got, we transferred our layout lines onto the piece of wood now. So we've clamped another piece of wood on here to act as a straight edge. And our rotor has one flat side that we're going to run along that piece of wood use a router bit to cut through the wood. I'm going to try and do it in a couple of passes. I don't want to try and cut the full thickness of this in one. So I'm just going to go up here the first shot see how things work out. That's going to work good. So that one went all the way through on the second pass. 
So now we need to get rid of that piece of wood, reposition some other ones so I can follow all the other straight lines the same way. Okay, so we've got some sanding to do in the corners because we wanted the rounded corners and I don't have anything round for the router to follow. So we'll just do that with some drum sander in the drill. We'll round off our corners. I will have to use the jigsaw. We've, we've got a curve in here. Same thing. I don't have anything I can mount that's got that curve for the router to follow. So I will have to use the jigsaw here. I'll put the finest blade that I can find in it to try and minimize the chipping on the edge. And then once we get this all cleaned up and all sanded out, we'll use this as a template for our second board. We'll clamp it directly on top. We have a bearing on this bit so the bearing can follow the finished one while the blade cuts the second one. That's the plan. We finished cleaning up the first one. We sanded all of our rounded corners, inside and outside corners. So we've laid that one that we finished on top of our other one. And hopefully uh, the bearing on this bit needs to follow this first sheet so the blade can cut through the second one. It will have to cut through the second one in one pass. Uh, if I try and raise the blade up, the bearing will not contact the first sheet, it'll be too high. Okay, we have a router set up with a quarter inch round over bit and we just it's just going to round the edges over a little bit. We're going to do both sides. So we'll do this side, we'll flip the sheets over and we'll do the other side. So it'll almost be completely rounded on the front edges. Uh, we've put both sheets together because this bearing on the end will hit the saw if I don't have that much of a thickness. So we've got everything set up. And that gives us a nice rounded profile on the front edge of those side panels. there now. We also rounded off the edge of the front here and this lower edge here. 
Uh, this hole we didn't talk about. There, there was a power button that you have to turn this monitor on and off. So we drilled a hole and rounded the edges of that one off. We got our speakers mounted now. Uh, we still have to do the marquee sign or whatever we're going to do up here at the top. So we have some final sanding now to do to get everything nice and smooth before painting. I'm going to trim out the frame down here to cover up all these screw holes and the edges of this plywood for the shelving. So I'm just going to like eighth of an inch thick maybe. Cut some bands of wood just to trim that out around the front. Uh, we've got the back panel on now. And we ended up cutting it short on purpose up here at the top. I mean, no one's going to see this. And this gives us a really good handhold for strength at the top. So when it comes time to move this, we've really got something to hold on to to move it. So we've got that done. Uh, the clamps that you see that are on it, the sides are just sitting there clamped on for now. I want to paint the side panels before it's actually assembled. So I haven't bothered uh, attaching them in any physical way yet. We're almost ready to begin sanding now to get ready for paint. So we worked out our marquee at the top. I cut letters out for now that we're going to paint different colors and put up there. Drilled some holes. We have some LED lights in behind. And this little guy will be our sensor uh, for the remote control that operates the LEDs. So the LEDs are going to extend down the back of it so you won't see them up in the top there when it's finished. So it's just going to run down the back, across the bottom and back up the other side. So it'll be some backlight coming off of this machine. So if you had the lights out in the room, we think it'll look kind of cool. We've got our hole cut out. This is where our power switch is going to go to turn the machine on and off. We're going to mount the switch, mount a wall plug actually inside. We can plug a power bar in and all of the electronics that we need, the monitor, everything else can plug into that power bar in there. Um, when we get to this switch and the wall plug, we'll have the wiring on the video also, so you can see how we wired up this switch. It's an IEC connector is what they call the switch. So we'll show you how that got wired up. So we're just about ready to start the final sanding before painting. Started to get our first coat of paint on. So we've painted the shelves because there is no doors on the front of this. So you'll see that. So we painted it, we painted some of the edges of this wood, it's more porous and it's going to soak up the paint a lot more than the surface is. So I wanted to get a first coat around on all those spots. Uh, we did the edges just in case when we put the sides on, I did the same with the sides, I just did around the edge of it. So when it's on, if there's any gaps, you're not going to see the color of the wood with the black around it everything is going to be black so hopefully it'll help hide it if there is any gaps so that's the inside of the side panels so i've just went all the way around the outside and again because this edge is more porous i wanted to get the first coat of paint on that so that can start to soak in and and seal that up a little bit so i just put that on with a brush go over it with some fine sandpaper probably a 300 grit, uh, get it nice and smooth. And when we're happy that everything is covered, there's no wood left showing and we have a really smooth surface, then we're gonna get the spray gun out and we're gonna spray the final coat. find some yellow paint for our Pac-Man symbol. Uh, we're just using this. This isn't going to be the finished color. This is just a, a base coat because it's really soaking into this wood. And we'll sand that nice and smooth. And we have a brighter red color that we'll use for the finish on those. And we'll do the same with the yellow. And I'm just coming back now with some 300 grit sandpaper. 
and I'm just sanding off the lines from the paintbrush. So instead of, you know, just brush painting it, you're going to end up with brush marks in it, no matter how good you are with a brush. This, this should give us a nice finish. Same idea again, this first coat is really going to soak into the wood. Uh, we're only putting it on with the, a roller this time. This is just one of those cheap foam rollers. It's a dollar store paint kit. Uh, it's going to put it on thinner than what the brush did when I did the other side. But we're hoping that this will seal it up enough. We come back with some 300 grit paper and just get that smooth finish with the black base in the wood already so when we spray it, it's easier to cover and we get the finish that we want. That's the plan. since you saw us putting that paint on with a roller and it's already drying up to sand. That's how much this wood absorbs um, the paint. And I don't know if you can see it. I'll try and get the camera in closer. Maybe where it's a little brighter up here, maybe you can see. So you can see where it's all little specks, light colored specks. So whenever you put any liquid on wood, it's going to raise the grain of the wood. And that's what it does. So you end up with a rougher texture. And we just sanded it again with 300 grit sandpaper. Once now that, that is soaked in, it's raised the grain. And when you sand it, those little light specks, that's where the wood grain has been raised. And it's actually sanded it right off. So there's no paint, you can actually see the wood again. But it gives it a nice sealing coat. Hopefully now when we spray it, the wood is 99% covered. Um, so we're not gonna have that same problem with the grain lifting back up and being a rough finish again. We're hoping. Um, if it does turn out rough after the first spray, then we'll do the same thing. We'll sand it again. We'll do a second spray coat to get that finish that we want. Okay, well that's pretty much it there for the frame. So that's the first time the sides have actually been screwed on. Up until now it's just been clamped. So everything is attached. The top piece there, we just put a couple of very small finishing nails where the marquee is going to be to hold it in place so when we spray everything it gets sprayed as well. But it will have to come back off yet uh, so that we can get the letters attached and the lighting attached that we want to put on there. So I think we're ready for spray paint.